Enter into the dangerous dungeons of Myth as a mighty hero and stand against the darkness. Visit the Myth Hub on beastofwar.com and begin your story. Fight for the Iron Kingdoms as a Warcaster. Take control of the mighty Jax, arcane devices and dark sorceries to bring the fight to the War Machine Hub on beastofwar.com. We're unboxing another tank. From tanks. From tanks. <laughs> right, yes, enough of uh, that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we're having a look at the, the Pershing. Yes. So this is a, an American heavy tank, yeah? This is an American, well, a heavy tank. You could debate was that. Is it heavy-ish? You could debate it. It was part of the, um, it was a project called T-26. Okay. Uh, T-26 was meant to be a heavy tank. Okay. Uh, but when they eventually came up, came up with the M26, which was the production model of it. Yeah. Uh, it, they reclassified it as a medium tank. Okay. But it was a medium tank that had everything going for it. Had an excellent en engine, good armor, good mobility, and it had a friggin' 90 millimeter gun on it. 90 millimeter gun? 90 millimeter. So All it right. took the Sherman and went, don't need you anymore, I have this. <laughs> <laughs> did it ever see live combat? It did, yes. Uh, right at the end of the war, I believe it was in service for the last, uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, fellas, about Two months. It okay. Got, it got two months of active service. It's seen combat in Cologne. Okay. You ever seen the footage of the Panther being destroyed in Cologne? Ah, yes. It's a Pershing that's hunting that down. Oh, I see. So, yeah. That's one of the the weirdest pieces. Well, not weirdest, but I don't know how to describe it. It's it's one of the strangest pieces that I've ever seen filmed during it's, World War II. It's a very visceral piece of tank combat caught on camera. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to yeah, say here. Yeah, that's exactly what it was. Right. Uh, now, in this, you get the option to make... Two variants, so you've mm -hmm. got the Pershing and the Super Pershing. Yes. Is there a difference on the stat cards? Uh, yeah, there should be. Now, I so. do like that we do have that, that duality to it where you can make both variants. Yeah. You know, but uh, ooh, I think you're only going to be able to make the one unless you're very handy with your magnets. Yeah, pretty much. Well, the stat cards between the two, and Justin, if you want to show them on the camera, yeah, there's yeah. a couple of differences. Yeah, so here we go. So what are we seeing here, John? Okay, so the Super Pershing has one extra fire paradise. Yep. Uh, has one extra armor. Yep. Uh, it has one less. Well, I can't remember what the blue one is. Hull point. Hull point. No, seven. The black number is the hull point. All right. So it has one more hull point as well. All right, but it's got a little more defense. Yeah. All right, and it's a little lower initiative on the Super Pershing. That's it. Initiative is a bit lower because it's a bit. If a heavier tank is a bit slower. Yeah, well, I mean, like whenever they came to the Super Pershing, it does kind of feel like they just said, right, I want a bigger gun in this. Let's put a gun shield on that, and let's put some extra armor on the front and sides. Yeah, pretty much. Um, they they basically took the the ninety millimeter on the standard Pershing and said, let's put a longer barrel version of that on. Hmm. Probably because they were trying to combat the likes of King Tiger and the the bigger German stuff towards hmm. the end of the war. All right, well, let's let's jump straight into sure. the sprues, okay? So, uh, first up, we have the two track sections. Yep. We then come down to side skirts. Now, do these go on the Pershing or the Super Pershing or both? Both. Both. Okay. Uh, we then have the two different turrets. Now, yep. I'm seeing that uh, one has a, a stowage box on the back. That's probably a counterweight. Uh, really? Yeah, that'll be a counterweight for the gun. Ah, I see. Okay, so I assume this is standard Pershing, this is Super Pershing. That'll purging. be Super Pershing, yeah. Okay. Uh, on the next sprue, ah, I see. So you only get one turret base here. Yes. So you will have to build one or the other. Yes. You've got uh, what's fondly called the rat shield for the front of the actual vehicle here. Yep. Uh, the rear of the lower hull, lower hull itself, yep. top engine, or top deck. Yep. Uh, spare track, pin for the, the turret. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got this, which is a hull mounted medium machine gun. Yep. Uh, this is a hatch, I believe. Yep, commander's over. Yep, there it is. This, I'm not sure what it is. What is this, John? Well, I, I can barely see it from where you're holding it, so just... just, uh, just yeah, yeah, there you just, go. This little bit here. That little bit? No idea. No Let idea. me look at the instructions. That might help. Oh, it's a, it's a stowage rack for the side of the turret. Okay. Uh, we then move across further. We've got these, which I believe were shock absorbers? Sh uh, shock absorbers slash compensators for the front armor, up armored part of the Super Pershing. Mm -hmm. You've then got two machine guns here. I'm assuming this is because this is a delic delicate yep. component, and it's nice to have that bit extra. Yep. We then have these components here. What are these? Uh, that looks like gun mount and gun mantlet. Gun mount. Well, there's gun mantlet, there's yep. gun mount. Uh, we've then got the actual base plate for the actual turret, if I can actually turn it on the sprue. Yep. Well, you'll, you'll see it later. It's riot shield. Yeah, the and riot we've shield then armor. got the two guns. And you can see a huge difference in the length of the barrel on this thing. Yeah, the Super Pershing's gun's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm guessing it's probably going to be 
very scary in game. You know, so we are only going to be able to build one variant from this, John. Super so purging. What, you're going to build super purging. Yes, because okay. I think it's the most intriguing looking one of the two. Okay, right. Well, uh, I'll tell you what. We'll take a quick break, and then when we come back, you will have built us a super purging. Hi guys, we're back. John, you have the super purging built. How'd it go together? It went really well, actually. A very nice kit to put together. Um, very interesting build, very simple build. So. Mm. Yeah. Well, uh, seeing it built, the gun is ridiculously long. Yes. It doubles the length of this thing nearly. It's awesome. <laughs> uh, whenever you were building it, you actually did this, right? Yeah. And at this point, I said, you know what, that actually looks almost correct. Yeah, it actually looks. looks a little bit less ridiculous yep. without having this super long gun on the front. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing this thing is probably going to be really effective in game. Well, we can hope. Yeah, we, well, we can hope. We've got the stats here. Yeah, well, it has an it has an extra dice over the purging when it's mm -hmm. attacking something. So, yep. and it has an extra dice when it's defending itself. Mm -hmm. That makes sense to me. Yeah. Well, I'm going to pull out a couple of the stat cards here okay. for the the upgrades because there's a couple of interesting ones. Okay, yep. so. Uh, the first one is a, a gunner you can put on. He's a character gunner, so he's a little more expensive, but yeah. he's giving you plus two initiative in the shooting step. Uh -huh. So this thing is going to be shooting at initiative eight. So it's it's going to be taking its shot really early on, right? Yeah. Uh, now, there's a little blurb on here. After taking a hit from a king tiger, Erwin took aim and fired back at the, the tiger and hit it, it, making it explode. Yeah. So is this this is a piece of history you know? Yes. Yeah, uh, give me the card. Let yeah, me read yeah, it again here for you. So the, yeah. Okay. So John P. Irwin. Yeah. Uh, was a gunner with the Third Armor Division, as far as I can remember, and as yeah. far as I see on my research. Yeah. Now the Third Armor Division was the only division to receive the Super Persian. Okay. Uh, one was sent across to Europe and was given to. Uh, John's crew, right, in in Europe at the near towards the end so of the I'll, war. So I'll assume he had probably already been trained on Pershing to know what he, he was, was up to. He was probably on Pershing before he went to Super Persia. I mm. don't know. I haven't read the the background to it. Um, yeah, been all a little bit on on the cuff here. Aye. but uh, the the stats for the Super Pershing in the field were really interesting. Now clearly it was just an experiment. Yes, they wanted course. to see if the if a bigger gun. Aye. And a bit of extra armor would help not only the crews feel a bit more comfortable, but actually make it more of an effective vehicle. Yeah, well, I mean, like, as it stands, the, the changes that were made. So we've got this new front plate here down yep. on the hull. Yep, that is two layers of spaced armor Okay. on there. So uh, they say on the, the stats that it was made out of boilerplate. Right. So when it arrived, uh, the engineering crews were told to up armor it. So they decided, right, let's get some layers of plate there. So on the front of the hull, it has... 38 millimeter plate, right. then a bit of a gap, right. then another 38 millimeter plate, right. then a bit of a gap, and then the hull armor. Right. There's a lot of metal to get through. Yeah, but it's, it. it's even that, that separate plate where it's actually dissipating the kinetic energy through it. Yeah, exactly. Interesting. Uh, so it made it very tough on the front. Mm. And uh, for the gun mantlet, they. Yeah, so they added this right yeah. shield with the two cheek plates here. Yeah, the, um, that plate was cut out of the front of a panther. So that is. What? That's a piece of ar of armor from the front plate of a Panther tank. <laughs> so when they were up armoring it, they were like, "Well, we have all these racks lying around." It's like, "Yeah, well, let's cut a piece of that out and let's weld that onto the front of the Pershing." Okay. So yeah, that's so where this, that came from. This tank is a little bit German, just just a smidge. It took a piece of you know German tank as a trophy, I suppose. But um, <laughs> now they say you know John claims you know in in the books and stuff that he was the gunner of. The single super purging that the third armor division were given, yeah, and that he took out a tiger with it. Right. Now we now, don't. Was it a, what type of tiger was it? Tiger, king tiger. Uh, we don't know. We don't. Um, know. I, there's plenty I could speculate, right? Because the, this engagement was known to happen on the 21st of April, 1945. Right. So, so you're right, looking right at the the closing end of the war. Yeah. Yeah, you're looking at the closing stages of the war. Mm. Um, not long, really, after Fury was set, the movie. Really? Now, and they came across the Tiger in there. Now, the thing is, 1,300, like, let's go Tiger 1. 1,300 okay. were built. Ah. Probably most of them destroyed in Normandy and Russia. We're talking about Barbarossa? Yeah. No, 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 later in Barbarossa. We're talking about Bagration when the Russians started to push back. Okay. That's when the, the Tigers took a lot of losses, especially at Kursk. Okay. And, um, yeah, so the, the Tiger force was drastically reduced, but then they had King Tiger that came mm. out. 
And King Tiger, there was about 400 of them built. Right. Now, I know a stat from the very end of the war during the Battle of Berlin. Right. Where um, it was talking, a guy had done research on the German engineering crews, the, the yeah. tank repair guys. Aye. And they said on the... On the 1st of May, 1945, right at the end of the war, Aye. on the 1st of May, they had nine King Tigers operational in Berlin. Right. On the 8th of May, the day before Hitler shot himself, Aye. they had 12 operational. So they were still getting them on their feet and getting them fighting. Yeah. So it makes you, there's a bit of skepticism in there. So uh, you're wondering, would something like a Tiger or King Tiger heavy like that have actually been sent out to face, you know, the Western Front? rather than being held in Berlin to defend. My, my take on it, and it's probably what Steve Zaluga says as well, because in one of his books he says he's a bit sceptical and this tiger shouldn't really have been about at that point. Yeah. Um, there's a chance that um, part of the SS still had one or two kicking around and they knew, they wanted, they knew that there was an Allied push coming, so they threw them in. Aye, you know, just... A bit of a token force to go, look, we still have these things. Yeah, beware. Beware, but... Most of them would have been pulled back into Berlin themselves, right. I think. Well, I, I do like the idea of, of having character upgrades like that because mm. it gives people a reason to go off and go, oh, who was this? Uh, who who John? was John Irwin? Yeah. And let's go and check him out. Yeah. yeah. Uh, although you do get some nice generic ones as well. So I've, I've picked another one out here. It's called Hasty Loader, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so what this is going to do is during your uh, shooting phase, you're getting plus two initiative. But during your movement phase, you're getting minus one initiative. Okay. The blurb on this is quite funny. Yeah. So it simply reads, How am I supposed to load this thing if you're trying to drive over every blasted bump between here and Berlin? <laughs> uh, yeah, I can imagine a loader saying that. <laughs> it's like, what well, do you expect uh, me to do? I, I'm expecting the language might have been slightly rougher in the vehicle. Depends who said it. Yes. If it was, a, if it was an American loader, probably. If yeah. it was a British loader, maybe. Maybe. Not just as bad, possibly. <laughs> <laughs> or just different. Or just different. But, I mean, like, having some upgrades that actually come with these upgrade sets is nice. Yeah. I mean, like, we've got uh, Precise Commander. You may reroll one attack dice per turn. You've got Hyper Velocity Shot giving you plus one shot during your shooting. Yep. And you've got a toolkit. This tank may reroll field repair rolls or for busted track, damaged engine, and jammed turret. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, like, it's, it's nice being able to throw those little bits of extra flavor into your force. Yeah. You know, because uh, you and me have played this. We played the basic starter set with Phil. Yep. And, yeah, we turned a half-hour game into an hour-long <laughs> brawl. <laughs> <laughs> Phil was more surprised than we were. He was yeah, like, it should only have lasted half an hour. What have you been doing? It's me versus you. It always happens. It's yep. always just a nasty, brutal fight. Yeah, pretty Honestly, much. Honestly, I want to get this down on the table to actually see how nasty and brutal it is in a game of tanks. Yeah, because definitely. It, looking at the stats, you know, it's got that nice gung-ho rule. Mm -hmm. I think it could be a lot of fun, and I think it could be a nice addition to your American side for tanks. Yeah. So, guys, I tell you what, drop us a comment below. Tell us, have you played the purging or the super purging in tanks? Are they as nasty as I imagine? And how would you normally upgrade your vehicles within it? Because that's something myself and John haven't really experimented with just yet. Yep. So we'll move on here. We will see you in the next video. It's time for 28mm World War II action. Will you recreate history or reshape it your way? On the Bolt Action Hub at beastsofwar.com. From Viking halls to the cities of the future, terrain buffs will love our foreground hub. Watch gaming tables of all genres come to life at beastsofwar.com.